came down here from Worcester, Massachusetts, where I lived and so forth, the school and so on. And uh, we retired down here. I, th I thought I'd like to go to the Great uh, Lakes up in Winnipesaukee for I love fishing and stuff like that. But uh, my wife said, I'd like the Cape. So here we are, and I'm glad it was. It's a good choice. I love it down here. And the work I was in in Worcester, I was involved in a lot of things in the community. To come down here and not be involved, it's, it's, it's a funny feeling and I wanted to get into the, what's going on down here. I went to a, a bird show. I saw one of the instructors uh, was giving lessons and I thought I might like to do that. Uh, so I asked him about it and he said, well, call me and we'll see and maybe show me something. I hadn't done anything at all. And then I did get an okay to come to the class. I went to Steve Weaver's class over in his house. And I ended up in a class with four men and four women. And I took to it right away, uh, I guess, because I try to get better at it. And I think anybody does that with, as with an art form or whatever. I don't really use any power tools in my copy, I never have. I have a small Dremel, which is for sanding or drill or something like that. But the main thing to use is a knife. And that's, and that's a good knife and it's a sharp knife. Carving is like uh, being a person like in the, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And I use that only because people will look at this and say, oh, I could never do that. I don't have the patience. But having done it, and we have a young lady in our class right now, it's a, she brought in a picture of the one she did and how she mounted it and everything like that with help. And she's so proud of it, and her husband's proud of her for doing it. So it's the class that I hold is we usually have anywhere six, eight, ten people. Uh, some go south in the wintertime, but uh, we're willing to take more, and uh, uh, we've done a lot of work in the way of. Uh, different things, but everybody who's been in there had never carved before. And now they're experts, so to speak, as opposed to the person who said, I could never do that. Here's where we start. This is the golf club. I take the head right off it, the shaft right off it. But that comes from one of these after I've taken off, taken off all the paint. This happens to be, you know, striated ones. Some of them are persimmon, which is a block. Of course, most of these have lead them anyway because that's why they have the plate so they can hit harder. This is the head comes down here. So this has to be cut in because these are gonna be feathered in the top. This is the eye channel which is here and the eye will partially go in around here. As they'll be smoothed out so the eye can actually go up and down. Now it's funny with some birds, especially birds of prey, their eyes almost go in a little bit because they have a target, they have prey. You have birds that eat seeds and it, they seem wider and, and they're on the little alert all the time to, to look around. If my class does anything wrong or consistently has trouble with, it's the eye socket because the eyes really go up and down. They don't bulge out. Now, it's interesting about carving, uh, whatever wood it is, sometimes you can carve right along and you go to the other side and it won't cut. It just won't cut the same because of the grains and so forth. So you have to turn it around and go this way. All birds have like a jowl. And you can see all the ones I've showed you before. That has to be kept in. And then, as I said, no flat spot on a bird. Here I have a, a burning tool comes apart, I have several different type points. This one happens to be my favorite. It's like both sides and it gets, it gets dull. You have to sharpen these almost like it with a, with a, a strop. 
because you get carbon on them. And if you're gonna make, uh, I have some of my, the people in my class do, if they can do 12 lines an inch, fine, but I want them to do 20 lines an inch or maybe 25 lines an inch, and that means fine lines. And instead of just paint, I don't put heavy co coats of paint on, I will put on a lighter color, and if I want it darker, I'll put a darker and darker, because I don't want those lines filled in. Some of the best stuff I'll put on when I put gesso on the whole thing, I'll use a bigger brush. When I get down to fine, I'll have a triple or number one, that one, a round head, and that helps me put the paint in. I, I'm probably not as steady as I used to be, but I can still do a pretty good line, I guess. And I have a choice of, of brushes. Uh, I use this little display as a, like a teaching tool. You can see on the bottom here, there's, it's a block, and that's how it's cut out to form the outside of a bridge, a rough end. That is roughened out to where I cut it and smooth it, as you can see. And I got a peg for a lay. Uh, then I take this same bird and I burn the feathers in. I draw the feathers in with pencil and I burn it. So this is that one. Next step. Next step, I take this same bird and I paint it, following the lines of the thing. And I take the peg out and I put in a pair of legs. And those are the main steps. Block, rounded, burnt, burnt, and painted, and finished.